Americans who live along the East Coast are still reeling from the knockout blow of Storm Sandy. It landed furiously, cutting off power, communications and travel. At least 40 people across the U.S. are reported to have been killed. Sandy transitioned from a hurricane to a post-tropical cyclone by the time it hit shore. Still, most New Yorkers had never seen anything like it. We expected an unprecedented storm impact here in New York City, and that's what we got. Uh, so while the worst of the storm has passed, conditions are still dangerous. I just can't stress that enough. A power station in Manhattan exploded. Electricity was knocked out to much of the borough. City officials say it will take at least one week to restore power, as well as water, rail, and other services. Voters reported at least 8 million homes and businesses in several states are still without electricity. The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission says workers are on the alert at a nuclear plant on New Jersey coast. The facility had been out of service for scheduled refueling. Still, officials there were concerned about high water levels. Three other nuclear plants in New Jersey and New York were shut down because of high water and damage to the electrical grid. As the water rose and the wind picked up, the fires began here on the Rockaways. I'm standing in front of what once was a home. You can see the devastation that this fire caused here. In fact, this area was once a neighborhood. And take a look at what it looks like right now. Completely destroyed by fire. You're looking at what once were homes. One, two, three. Uh, uh, my eyesight here, I can count probably a dozen homes here that went completely up in flames. Firefighters, you can hear them right now as they continue to work on putting out fires. They do continue to grow here in this neighborhood. We've been driving around here the entire morning, and all we can do is just look as these fire crews try to get to these scenes. The water here, the floodwaters that swept in yesterday, made it incredibly difficult for these crews to get to them in time and right now all these down power lines and trees continue to make it very difficult for crews to get to these homes and put these fires out again take a look at what we're talking about i mean this was a home a two-story home like many of the homes here in some cases we're looking at three-story homes right now all that's remaining are their fireplaces uh, the chimneys there those brick chimneys they survived the wooden structure here it clearly did not as far as the cleanup this is really only the beginning Beginning. We were on the boardwalk earlier today. That boardwalk completely destroyed on the Rockaways. The waves so strong, they literally ripped it up off of the beams there. We were told at one point by residents here that last night, as tide was at its highest, the bay here met the ocean. This entire area that we're standing in was underwater up to six feet. The water obviously now receded, and now we're getting just a first-hand look of the destruction that has been caused here. And of course, the destruction only continues as these fires clearly continue to burn. So much of that iconic beach town of Seaside Heights is underwater, full of debris there. Parts of that famous boardwalk wiped out. Nightline anchor Terry Moran is there this morning with the latest on the scene from his vantage point. Terry. What you are seeing up the beach, those fires that you've been looking at, that is the concern they've got here. Uh, this is an unbelievable scene, block after block, mile after mile of this kind of ruins. And in that wreckage behind me, we can hear the gas lines hissing. That is the fear for the people who are here. There are people here still, and they've been told by the fire department that one spark and this town could blow.
and it is getting dangerous here. Gas lines are broken. There is fuel from boats and cars sitting in the floodwaters across the town. And they said that um, if they couldn't shut off the gas, everyone has to leave because the whole town could blow. There are some safety concerns from the storm in terms of shutting down portions of two nuclear power plants. Those concerns are at the Salem plant in New Jersey and at Indian Point, which is about 45 miles north of New York City. Jerry Nappy is the communications manager at Indian Point, and he joins us on the phone. Jerry, welcome. Uh, obviously, when you hear any concerns about a nuclear plant in uh, this kind of environment, it raises some eyebrows. Uh, tell us what we should know. Well. At Indian Point, it's a it's a very well protected site, and obviously there's clear damage up and down the river at different sites. But specifically at Indian Point, flooding has historically been virtually non-existent, and we didn't experience any flooding on site yesterday. We didn't uh, also did not experience any wind damage. So these plants are built to a very high standard. And I think that showed yesterday with that severe weather that we were able to withstand. Let me ask you this, because one of the reports that came out from AP uh, said that one of the units at Indian Point was shut down on Monday because of external electrical grid issues. What does that mean? Right. So late last night, um, one of our two units, uh, they sent power out to the grid, and they're out in the electrical grid there was a disturbance and what that means is we cannot send power out any longer if we can't send power out to the grid our plant shuts down by design automatically basically to protect itself from further electrical damage and the plant operated as it's supposed to do all right so it sounds like you have you have no concerns at this point is that correct well again we're very well protected uh, we expect to have uh, that that unit back online in the next couple of days after a, a number of safety checks are done but uh, we did weather the storm very well yesterday. There was also this issue uh, with a unit at the Salem plant, which is in Hannox Bridge, New Jersey. Do you know anything about that facility or anything you can tell us about the other plants along the coastline? Well, it's not one of the plants that Entergy owns. The yeah. Entergy plants, I know, uh, all came through the storm very well, operated uh, safely, and are continuing to operate. All right. Uh, Jerry, thank you. Obviously, everybody will watch that situation closely, uh, and it sounds like things are under control at the Entergy plants, which is good news. We'll stay on top of it. Thanks for speaking with us today. We do appreciate it. Thank you. So definitely a serious situation out there. And while we hope it doesn't come to, I hope they don't even have to use the two weeks of fuel. Hopefully the water will, you know, wash away and they can get back to things as usual. And, you know, how it usually goes when we report on real news, we're fear mongering. But when you hear it from CNN, it's, it's credible news. So, you know, whatever. But if you're in New Jersey, be aware that, that you could have some type of uh, potential problem with, uh, with your nuclear facility. So, you know, FYI. Let's talk to Professor Christopher Busby from the European uh, Committee on Radiation Risks to try and uh, gauge exactly what any potential dangers might be. You know, what danger is it then tonight, Professor, as you see it? Well, I think it's uh, quite a, an, an unlikely, it's, uh, in my opinion, quite unlikely that anything bad will happen. It's not like a tsunami. There's not some huge tidal wave coming at them. But, the, but the, possibility, the problem would be that the cooling system pumps become flooded, the electrical systems that back up the cooling system, so there won't be any cooling. And, of course, you know, like in these situations with nuclear power stations, even though there might be a very remote risk of something happening, when it does happen, mm. it's pretty catastrophic. Well, of course, it, mean, brings, of course it brings to mind Fukushima, this, this, this very same thing. I mean, are there any pr better protection uh, measures in place to stop something happening here that, than happened in Fukushima or not? Well, the problem is that with, with, that with all nuclear power stations, you, you, can, you can never make them absolutely perfectly safe. You can make them as safe as you, as you, as you can get, but you can't, you can't um, make it impossible for these situations to occur. And when they do occur, especially in this one, which is 65 miles south of New York City, very, very high population density, um, it would be pretty catastrophic. Oyster Creek's America's oldest nuclear plant, isn't it? It was built, I gather, two years before Fukushima. Could age be a factor, any potential danger here? Well, of course, of course. I mean, the older the nuclear power station, the, 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 less, uh, um, the less good the integrity of the various control systems and the, and the actual metallic components of the control systems, too. Of course, are that much older, they're more corroded, they're, they, they, they can be brittle as a result of neutron effects. 
Um, so yes, of course, that's, that, that, that certainly is a factor. And in fact, New, uh, Oyster Creek, uh, like all of those fire stations near New York City, were built against the express wishes of the people who lived there. They were pushed through by some kind of federal act, which, which, which overcame the opposition of people who lived there. Very well, in mind what you've just said, it's not great news for people in New York, New York State, is it, uh, to, to, to sleep peacefully tonight. Officials say there are currently no protective actions taking place outside the nuclear facility, they say, because there's no imminent threat from radiation. OK, but should precautions be taken anyway? I think it's more likely that there's nothing much they can do. Um, so, so it's no point in, in scaring people and trying to run around and do stuff. There isn't much they can do. All they have to do there is sit and keep their fingers crossed and hope that the flood waters don't go so high that they actually flood the control systems and the electricity which backs it all up. That's really the problem. So it's not really like Fukushima in the sense of the huge amounts of energy that were unleashed then. But it could be just kind of a slow flooding affair, which would be quite, which could be quite as nasty. Just really briefly, what is the worst case scenario there? Then, if this did happen, would it go up potentially, like like Fukushima, or the fact that it's already closed down anyway, uh, uh, mitigate um, any uh, any bad things that would happen there? Well, you could still have a meltdown, of course. I, I mean, the the, the 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 fuel inside a shut down reactor is still extremely hot and has to be cooled. So if you don't cool it, then it gets very, very hot and can melt down. So, yes, of course, you can still have some pretty ca catastrophic uh, problems. Well, keeping fingers crossed, of course, it will certainly never come to that. Uh, thank you for your thoughts anyway and giving us a briefing. Professor Christopher Busby from the European Committee on Radiation Risks. So, five nuke plants shut down, parts of them shut down, reactors, lost power, electrical power, temporary backup systems, generators fueled by diesel engines worked except one I'm not happy with and that's power to unit three at Indian Point in Buchanan New York it was automatically shut down they lost their connection from the electrical generator and the offsite grid was lost and um, it never says that they ever had the that the ever the backup ever kicked on it just says there was no release of radioactivity. I don't like that. I don't like that. Tell me it kicked on. Tell me it automatically happened. Don't tell me that, well, it shut down and then we jumped on it and we took a look and it went off grid. And But we're, don't worry, there's been no release of activity and we're continuing to operate. Just Let's just double check that, okay? Somebody out there watching, would you just double check uh, the, the Buchanan, New York nuclear plant called Indian Point Let's just be sure. I want to, I want to, but let me just say this. Other than these issues, which are big, we may have escaped some major catastrophe from a nuclear plant. But don't count it out yet and don't lock it all the way down. Let's be sure.